right guys, we are back today with the Maverick Hybrid. And as the title says, this is going to be a 1500 mile update of the truck here. So uh, if you have been following the videos, we know that we put about 600 miles on this thing, uh, picking it up. So I put about, I'll just say about a thousand miles daily driving it over the last two weeks. And uh, as usual on par with all my other vehicles I do to the channel, we're gonna do a 1500 mile update on it. I'm gonna kind of just, this is gonna be a talking point video, how I feel about the truck, how I like it. Uh, this is also perspective from somebody that also owned an EcoBoost. So, uh, with all that being said, I feel like I have a good understanding of what this truck is all about. And it is very windy and kind of cold today, so I'm gonna try to stand and block out the wind as much as I can. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, the truck is uh, clean. I just literally rolled it out of a car wash right now and got the works package. It's gonna get trashed as soon as we hit the road, but, uh, I figured for the video, let's go ahead and get it shining up real nice. This is actually the first real wash that it has gotten since I've uh, picked it up from the dealer. So, seeing it like this looks really good, I have to say. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. As we all know, this is an XL model, and uh, I am coming. To, I was coming from a loaded XLT with heated seats and all that, and all that good luxury features that you would expect to have in this type of climate. This doesn't have any of that, and I really, I don't find myself missing it. Uh, things that I do miss about that in the morning is about the first five minutes of my commute because that's only pretty much when I used the heated seat and after that it it got turned off but uh, so I do kind of miss the heated seats but for something that was about ten thousand dollars more than this truck I, I can live without and uh, kind of first and foremost that's kind of where I stand with this truck is in base model form you get pretty much the meat and potatoes in the XL everything else is kind of fluff fluff as far as leather seats heated seats and maybe a few other things of course you know the nicer trims are nicer but at what cost if you are comfortable paying you know 10 to 15 grand more for a lariat per se or an xlt be my guest uh, but in my own opinion i am very happy with my xl i have here with of course the upgraded wheels now that is a big difference right there uh, it's pretty much standard uh, equipment there you need to go ahead and probably upgrade your wheels when you get an XL because the steel wheels look terrible uh, and so with all that being said we have done quite a few things to this truck over the last few weeks as far as accessorizing it and stuff like that I made a video of upgrading the wheels and kind of going into more depth of the wheels I'm gonna probably upload that after this video but so I do have more in depth on that we also tinted the windows and added a bed cover as you all saw tinted windows I made a cool little combination with this truck. It's hard to tell off or, uh, on camera, but I ended up tinting the front windows 20% in the front. I did a 35 in the back. So darker, the lower, lower the number, the darker the tint. So basically we have 20% up front, 35% over the rear factory tint, which pretty much levels it off with the front tint. It, it's a very clean, not dark look from the inside because you can still see through the back windows. So like I said, uh, 35 over factory with matched with 20% front, it gives it a super clean look. I know a lot of people do 20 and 20, and it kind of just makes everything here black. Even on the interior, it's kind of hard to see out of. So uh, with that combo I just told you about, you're gonna be very happy with it. Uh, it'll be just a little bit darker than factory. And then of course we did do 5% on the back glass because the driving at night, headlights do go come through there. And uh, as, as you're, when you're driving behind this, you can also see the inside of the cabin uh, with standard factory tint. So uh, we just kind of sealed the back off from everything else. Makes it a lot more comfortable to drive at night. So with all that being said, I know I had mentioned in the last video, I, I did not care for the Velocity Blue, but with everything we've done to it, it's toned it down between the wheels, the bed cover and the window tint. It's weird, but it did. And I think it looks super cool. So of course, this is the hybrid. And uh, I guess the main question I get is, do you like the hybrid or the EcoBoost more? And I'm gonna move out of the wind here, but I do have to say, I am super satisfied with the hybrid. I definitely would keep the hybrid. I would not go back to an EcoBoost. That's my own opinion. Uh, one thing I don't care for about the hybrid is the heat. The heating is not the best. It takes a while to get warm. That's because you're using electric a lot of the times. So the heat coming out of the vents is never hot, hot like the EcoBoost. Like the EcoBoost was pretty much instant heat. So I have to say, if you live in like 
a very cold climate, maybe such as Michigan, uh, you might want an EcoBoost. But if you can live with, you know, kind of the mediocre heat when the engine is off in the city, you know, get the hybrid. Um, and so another thing with the hybrid is the gas mileage. I'm getting about 25 to 30 right now with the way I drive. And it's nine, pretty much 95% highway and uh, a lot of idling because it's so cold. So obviously when that warms up and the conditions are more proper, we'll probably get closer to 30, 35. But, um, you know, I know the window sticker says one thing. I, uh, I'm i not disappointed with the gas mileage. I uh, totally expect to get about 25 out of this. I know, again, it says 30, 30, 40, but it's what it is. And like I said, my expectations were such, so I'm not surprised by uh, any means. Again, 25 out of something like this, awesome. It's super awesome. And the fact that I can get better at some point when it gets better out, yes, it's super cool. Yeah, it's still doing about six miles a gallon better than the EcoBoost. And I have to say, with these Michelin Defender LTX tires, these these things do kick ass in the snow with the hybrid. This thing is super good in the snow. It's just as stable as the all-wheel drive. Of course, the all-wheel drive is gonna be better as far as like takeoffs and all that, but this thing still, still feels super planted. No complaints with front wheel drive in this climate out of like maybe the three or four big snowstorms we get. Uh, and as you saw in the last video, this thing did super good. So we do have 245, 65, 17s on this wrapped on the all-wheel drive EcoBoost premium off-road uh, wheels. Now, 245s are actually even bigger than what comes standard on these, so I can also say my gas mileage probably dropped maybe a, a mile or two. It didn't go down too crazy. So, with all that, I think we have a very nice looking truck here. Again, all for 23 grand. That's what I paid for this. So, let's go ahead and check out the interior. Nothing too crazy going on with it. But it's super cool to see the metallic flake in that as well. Come over the interior. Nothing too crazy, nothing noteworthy. But we will check it out. The seat's holding up fantastic. Yeah, these all kind of lift up right here in pretty much all the models. I don't know what the Lariat looks like, but I do know the cloth versions. They kind of wear right there, and that's not even a big deal. It's not a big deal at all. So uh, let's go check it out. Uh, the floor mats are doing their job. Let's get in here. I hope the audio isn't ruined by all this wind. I'm trying to block it out. But, uh, it's super windy out. And uh, let's go over here and start talking about the interior. Again, this is a perspective from somebody that uh, owned a XLT with kind of a nicer interior. They're two totally different interiors, and you're either going to love them or hate them. I, I guess I'm pretty neutral on both of them. I, I really have come to like the uh, XL interior for what it is super basic and it's non-offensive it just kind of does what it's got to do so i do like this cloth portion right here better than the xlt did just because this is warm when it's cold like this these things are bricks these things are just solid rocks so the fabric is super nice to have i like that it's really nice that they did that and then the color combos i think they did a nice job with the blue and the black it just looks more normal like i said i think either interior i'm indifferent to it so uh, no big deal either way, but it does look good even in the base. We do have our locking gas cap, which I do come to like on the hybrid. And our headlights right here. And coming over to the steering wheel. This does not have cruise control. Everybody likes to talk about cruise. You can definitely add cruise. It's been done. I don't miss it. I'm probably going to add it just for the sake of adding it. But yeah, it's, I don't find myself missing cruise control, especially in all this, a lot of city driving, if I'm ever doing it. Uh, around the highway, I, I really don't use it either. So, uh, looking down here, we are uh, pretty much need gas after the video, but that's our tank so far. I, I think that comes out to about 24, 25 miles a gallon. Again, I already mentioned the mileage. I'm not going to go too far into it. But, so, that's what it is. I'm super happy with it. I love the way this truck drives as well. It drives super nice, super smooth. It's kind of dull and numb feeling like a hybrid is, but I like that. It's it's smooth. So, so we'll go over here and check out the center now. So coming down here to the center, it's pretty clean for the most part. We're going to try to keep this truck clean. So we do have the CDP, of course. We do have a power parking brake, and then our drive modes, traction control, and our auto hold. So these are our drive modes right here. You can change them. You have tow mode, slippery mode, that works pretty good. Eco mode works really good as well. It just makes everything even more numb. 
in dull to drive. So I never use eco mode. People rant and rave about eco. Sorry. Um, I don't use it, but I do use sport mode often. Uh, it kind of simulates gear changes and it just makes the car peppier. It enhances the throttle response, all that stuff. Sport mode's really nice. And I think it also keeps the engine on more often than not. So in cases like cold weather driving, I like to leave it in sport mode because I feel, I feel like the engine is on more than if it were to be in eco because eco is trying to keep the engine off to stop using gas. Sport is the total opposite. So that's kind of a little hack I found with the hybrid is leaving it in sport when you want to get the interior warmed up quicker. Again, as you can see, the truck's been on for, I don't know, probably a half hour and we just kind of float around there. Just enough to keep heat in the cabin. So not too big of a deal. You just have to kind of know your workarounds with the system. It's the passenger side and the moonroof. Um, if you guys can opt for a moonroof in this, definitely go for it. It's such a nice feature, especially if you have tinted windows like this. It definitely adds a lot of light to the interior. And of course, I'll go all day about sunroofs, but uh, I think they're such a nice addition and they work. People like to go about, they leak. I, I personally never had a leaky sunroof. And uh, actually I had a, a leaky sunroof in one of my escapes, but that's uh, that, we don't want to talk about that one. So, um, but yeah, talking about the window tint again, that is pretty much all the windows are tinted. And as you can see, the interior is, you can still see inside. That is, I would like to thank that to that 35 right there. So uh, if you want your cabin to look nice still, do this, do what I did. Because you can still see perfectly fine, even with the black interior. Let's go ahead and get out. We'll pop under the hood. And now I do know a lot of hybrids are having an issue with a red hot catalytic converter and a smell when they warm up in the morning. That is no exception with this one. This one does not have the hot red hot converter that I know of so far. I did pop it the other morning to check it out. It did have a smell though, and it's not that new car vehicle burn off smell. It, it definitely was a weird smell. So I'm getting kind of that weirdness. I might take it in if it gets any worse to the dealer. Um, so that's kind of my only real noteworthy issue noticing so far with it. And uh, also when I have my radio turned up with CarPlay, the speakers like to pop at maybe 25 to 30 on the volume. Now I know 25, 30 is top volume, but they shouldn't be popping. Uh, I think the amplifier is bad on this truck. It's only done it for two days low and it hasn't done it since. So I just don't know, but that is indications of a bad uh, amplifier. So. With between the amplifier and the smell on startup in the morning, when I let it idle in the morning for 10 minutes or so, I think I'll probably take it to the dealer at some point. Maybe come oil change time. So let's go check out the back seat. I also really do like this built Ford Tough thing in the dash. Back seat. This one also was equipped with the 400 watt inverter. I do plug my phone into that every once in a while when I want to fast charge it with like an iPad charger. But uh, even this one charges pretty fast, but it's nice to have on this truck. So this is a pretty fully equipped XL model. And uh, one more thing before we go outside, I would like to say the Copilot 360 is very sensitive in this truck. Now I'm, it, I'm sure it's just me, but it seems to be more sensitive in the hybrid. Than my last EcoBoost. Like I said, it's probably all in my head, but I do have all the systems turned down, low sensitivity, everything's kind of turned off, and it interferes. It cuts the radio off, it makes a bunch of beeping noises, it really does cause more chaos than it's really worth. So I might try to disable it up there. So if I could really go back, I know I had mentioned that I would rather have this package in the truck, I probably would just compromise with manual mirrors and get rid of that system altogether. It's just it's kind of a mess, but that's my thoughts and takes on that. So let's go check out the back and we'll wrap it up. Those are all my pretty much real talking points with the truck. Big fan of this gator cover out here. Very high quality, as you all saw in the video. I'm gonna install, a, I'm gonna install a, a damped handle or a strut right there to make the soft drop tailgate. But we don't really use it in the cold weather right now. But as you can see, that does fold back and all that stuff. Super high quality. We do have some bed carpet coming as well. So that'll be put on in the next few weeks. But there is that. It doesn't really keep it watertight, as you can see. But it's a truck bed. It's stuff's going to get a little wet. 
definitely shields things from the elements though. Say this thing looks super good cleaned up. Like I said, this is pretty much the first time I've seen the truck all clean. Um, and we also did add the switchbacks up there with our LED side markers down there. Those look super crisp. All the right modifications to give it a clean look. So under the hood here, it's a little dirty right now. It's salt blasted pretty much, but uh, like I said, nothing's red hot back there. So yeah, as far as the uh, catalytic converter goes, it seems to be warm or it doesn't like get hot or red that I know of, but uh, I'll keep an eye on that. But that's going to wrap it up on the Maverick. That's the 1500 mile update in a nutshell. We're trying to, I'm trying to keep it somewhat short, but if you have any questions about it, drop them down below. The truck's probably going to change a little bit more uh, until we get to the next video, but what you see right here is pretty much where it's at. It might do a level, but we'll see. So uh, as usual, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you all later.